And I saw what those managers and those owners were making. And I didn't see a difference between me and them, to be honest. Like, I had went to school for this. I know some of those people did not go to school. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to school to be a tax preparer. Okay. Um, now, to advance, instead of you need to get some, you know, licenses, some credentials, but to be a tax preparer, you don't have to go to school. You just need the training. It's a- Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting show of the About That Water podcast. Uh, today's host is Courtney Matthews from the lovely, what do we call it, Tax? Courtney. Tax. Yes. I'm tax sorry. Courtney. I'm so horrible with the name. Because okay. I was looking at your name, I was like, I know Courtney Matthews. Um, <laughs> so can you just tell us a little bit about your business and um you know, how you get started? Why, why did you even start a tax business in the first place? Okay. So like you said, my name on Instagram is tax coach Courtney. I run and operate a firm um, called MCOR tax and accounting. Uh, we've been operating going into our seventh year, but this will be going into my 14th year in the tax industry. Um, I've always loved numbers. I'm I was always good at math. Um, so in high school, we had the opportunity to take an elective, and one of those was accounting one. And I was like, okay, I don't know much about accounting, but I knew I liked numbers, and it involved numbers. So I took accounting one, and I absolutely loved it. Um, so then my senior year, they offered accounting two. So I took it, ended up becoming like a – um, not a teacher's assistant, but I, um, she kind of counted on me to help. So someone like a mentor. So when it came time for, for college, I knew what I wanted to major and why everybody was kind of <laughs> scrambling or doing like the general studies. I knew I wanted to go into accounting. Then my thought was, and what was presented to me is either you're a professor at a college or something like that, or you work for a prestigious accounting firm and you, you're kind of working 50, 70 hours and you kind of climbing your way up the ladder. And so for the longest, that's what I had in my head. And so that's kind of, you know, what I went to school for. Um, went to school. Um, I ended up uh, getting pregnant, having a baby. And then I took a job doing an accounting for a dealership. It was the Audi dealership. And um, it was entry-level accounting, but I absolutely loved it. But I was still in school. Finished school, got my degree in accounting, uh, majored in accounting, uh, minored in business uh, management. I don't know. I just really always liked it, even though I took other routes. I've had other businesses, multiple other businesses. I've always done this on the side. Um, and I got into taxes kind of by accident. My mom was working with the guy who ran a tax firm. I started working there part time um, and I just started asking questions. He trained me. Um, I worked there for about, I don't know, four or five years, took a manager role. And after that, it was just on. And I just was like, OK, when I took that manager the role and I saw how to have the business works behind the scenes that's when I knew oh I can do this myself mm-hmm. and so here we are that is awesome because it like listening to your story it's almost as if high school was that turning point for you would that be fair enough to say yes for sure I always go back to that moment because I didn't know really what accounting was I'd heard it but I'm 16, 17 years old. So I didn't really know what it was, but I knew it involved numbers. And so when I started to learn about it, it was, I just loved it. It made sense to me. It was something accounting is either it equals or it doesn't equal. There's no gray area in accounting. If it doesn't equal, we have to find out why. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think that's what I really like about it. So if somebody out there listening right now is saying like, yeah, but I don't like the numbers and I don't want to work the long hours. Is that for them? 
Yes, it can still be because to my surprise, yes, it involves numbers, you know, but it's not a lot of depending on my math skills. It's a lot of principles. So accounting is a lot of principles, processes, and procedures. And as long as you know um, the general accounting principles, it'll start to make sense. So it's, it's not really about the numbers <laughs> per se, it's uh, applying those principles. Um, so yeah, and then these days, no one's counting on their hands and like, we have systems, we have calculators, you know. Uh, but what I was going to say is what I found going into it, my thought process of I have to work for a firm and I have to do it this way was so wrong. There's so many areas of accounting. You have auditors and they don't really deal with numbers much at all. I mean, they're just checking, you know. Well, they do deal with numbers, but it's not as much. Um, you have auditing, you have taxes, you have financial accounting, cost accounting, production accounting. It, it's so many areas wow. of accounting that I didn't know. And I'm glad I found taxes because that's what I like. Okay. See, I didn't know that there were different levels to accounting. Um, and then taxes came through. So in the accounting one-on-one class, did it actually allow you to kind of pick and choose what type of accounting or this was just kind of like a broad, broad set? Do you remember? It was really broad as debits and credits, uh, you know, explaining how to uh, do a, it's called a T chart and the basic principles of accounting, like what's an asset, what's a liability, what's equity and what falls in the um, asset category, what falls in the liabilities, how those things work together. Um, so that, that was the basic that we were doing. And then more so accounting too was applying those things. That's where I, t- I, I learned how to balance a checkbook, <laughs> how to do a general ledger at the end of the month, how to do a budget. That's where I learned all those things in high school. Wow. See, I need to, cause I'm actually trying to figure out how I can start actually teaching inside the, the high schools and middle schools and trying to get them to understand like the basic levels of accounting. Mm-hmm. Um, but not really call it accounting, just more so of like life. <laughs> no, because life it, is, is. <laughs> it is life. Like I, I'm grateful that I learned those lessons. What I wish I had learned more about was credit because I, mm. I had to fall and bump my head on that one. Okay. But at least I knew how to manage my money, you know, outside of that. So was your parents ever in accounting or anything like that? I think you did say that your mom. No, um, I feel like I probably learned in reverse from watching my mom handle money. Uh, um, now I will say she took some great strides. She was a single mom of two and, and we, I was about 11 when we moved into our first like home that she got for us. So that means she was probably about 30, 31, 32 and so looking back, that was a great accomplishment for her to do on her own. Um, but there were things like, you know, credit cards or like letting the bills pile up. Um, those habits I kind of paid attention to. And now when I get a bill, I open it almost at the mailbox. Like I don't let oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to know, even if I don't have it to pay them. I want to know, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, those type of things I saw my mom do. And like I said, I didn't really learn about credit. I wish that I had learned about credit um, earlier from her. But I realize now that she didn't really have it to teach me, you know. Mm-hmm. And so now I have a 12 year old son and we talk about money and assets and investments and he's probably tired of me but <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask like how does he even feel about you just keep pouring this into him it's like can you shut up for the day we're trying to I eat feel, some breakfast <laughs> I, I feel like he's hearing me because now um so my son is on my payroll right oh, nice okay my son is on my payroll he gets paid every single month a part of that goes into his um uh, investment accounts and then he has like his little cash app. So he knows to budget his cash app. He knows if he, how much uh, Roblox costs, you know, 
and how much he needs to, to have Roblox plus whatever else he needs. He has his little card, so he has that. He's at the age now he's kind of going out with his friends here and there. And so he has his own money to spend. But I can see him kind of putting the cost together in his head and mm. matching it against how much he has. So I, it's working. Right. <laughs> it's working. And I would do that even when he was younger with Christmas money, birthday money. I would make him sit down and think about how much the things that you want, how much do those things cost? And then versus how much do you actually have to spend? Mm. And I think, I think it works because he does it on his own now. No, you gotta, you gotta talk about like how getting your child um, involved in your business and like, what were some of those strategies or challenges that you were having? I mean, First of all, I got so many questions because I want to talk about your children, your, like your child, how you got into it. And then also like, how did you actually take that leap from being an employee to now actually being your own business owner? Like what were those strategies or challenges during that time frame? Man, so when I when I first took the leap, I, it was uh, what, 2014. My son was about to be five years old. And it let me say, it was not the best financial situation for me to be doing that um I had just just graduated college with my accounting degree and um I was working for I don't really want to say the name but it was it, it was a big you know tax company and I just knew that I was nearing my time because I don't know I just always felt like I wasn't doing enough and so like I said that last year I was there I was in a manager role And so I was able to see how much the parent, the owners were making. So it were, there were multiple offices in the region and my office, I could see what my office was doing on, on the daily accounting report. Um, But I can see all the other offices and then the main office. And so when I compared (laughs) what the main office was making compared to what we were making, it just wasn't adding up. I had been there for years and I was like, I was paying attention. And I was like, I just, I just feel like I can do this on my own. <laughs> um, I didn't start out in the, my first business wasn't a tax business. Um, so I, I had a makeup career, uh, five and a half years, had studios, I had other artists, I had a makeup school. What? Yeah. <laughs> so I had a Okay, cosmetic. we need to bring you back and talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that, that was my first business. So by the time I was ready to step out and do this tax business, I paired what I knew about, you know, starting a business with what I had learned from watching the, t- the franchise that I was working for. And I just had to figure it out. I think my thing was, I'm, I don't know, I've always been a leader, you know. I just saw the income cap from where I was at and I saw what those managers and those owners were making and I didn't see a difference between me and them to be honest like I had went to school for this I know some of those people did not go to school because you don't have to go to school to be a tax preparer okay um now to advance instead of you need to get some you know licenses some credentials but to be a tax preparer you don't have to go to school you just need the training and so I didn't see a difference between me and them we had went to meet them um, that last year I was a manager. We, we went to the city to meet the owners of this company. I honestly just did not see a difference. And so <laughs> I just was like, I can do it. You looked this. them up and down like that too. Like, they ain't got nothing. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew how to do taxes very right. well. I, I had it down to a science, I could do it in like 15 minutes of simple return. Uh, I knew there was more that I needed to learn. And the guy that taught me, he was in my corner. Like he knew how ambitious I was. And and I know my second year, I think my second or third year into it, I I did have to call him because I couldn't figure out something. And he just, I always kind of been there if I needed him to bail me out or something. I just did it. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, because um, 
you know, it just seems like you went through with your mentorship. You were actually doing great things already in the space and just having that confidence in yourself that a lot of people kind of lose when they start seeing the money uh, and where you sit at on that totem pole, you know, just like they can do it. I can do it, too. And that, that belief system. And a lot of women don't have that. Um, not saying it as a sexist type thing, but that's one of the, the big things that I've heard from reading books and actually listening to other women. And even with my wife, uh, trying to tell her to start looking at other jobs like, babe, you can actually do this. And she actually went out on a limb and did it and actually got the job. So I thought that was actually pretty cool that you find it on your own um, without somebody pushing you. Difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I didn't have any entrepreneurs in my family. I didn't even realize I was an entrepreneur. Like, mm. I, I just knew, I don't know. I just, I didn't see anybody doing what I was doing. Um, well, my first business when we started out as a makeup artist, there were few people in my town doing that. And like I say, I wasn't in the best financial state. I had a child. Uh, I ended up having to break my lease and move in with my business partner at the time, who was my best friend. And we just had to sacrifice. So I don't want people to think it doesn't come without it. Sacrifices and it looks different for everybody. Um, but I think the reason why a lot of women don't do it is because of those obligations. Like we want to be in a safe place, especially if you've been broke before, if you've been poor before, if you've had to worry about food before. And when you finally get to a place where those wor worries you know, are no longer your concern, it is difficult to step back into a place of unknown. And you don't know if you're going to go back to that point. I just had got to the point where the money wasn't <laughs> adding up anyway. Mm. Um, I had a choice between paying my son's tuition or paying the rent. And so I already told you I broke my lease. So I ended up <laughs> paying my son's tuition for right. you know, the rest of that year. Broke my lease and moved in with her. Oh, that was a sacrifice. I had to share a room with my son. He was five years old. That was a sacrifice. Um, but you know what? I just knew that I didn't want to look up. And I'm telling my child, you can be anything. You can do anything, you know, and I'm not doing it. Right. And I also knew I wanted freedom. I needed freedom to be able to be at all of his football games and, you know, be at all the practices and go to the field trips because my mama, my mama didn't have that freedom. You know, she had two kids. She had to work and I was very active in school and she couldn't always come to all my stuff. And I remember how that felt. And so when I had a kid, it wasn't playing. I was very, very young, but I always said that I want to be available to him. Nice. And having a job just wasn't just wasn't it for me. Yeah, I mean, just seeing your transformation um, coming up from then into now, and actually put him on payroll now, and actually building that confidence within himself. Um, I even saw that you've lost so much weight over the pandemic instead of gaining the pounds like everybody else. I'll see you in there in the gym getting in it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome that you're doing such great things. Um, but I actually want to talk about um, for when somebody's ready to sign up for your course, uh, because you are a tax coach. Mm -hmm. um, what do they actually get out of that? So, I definitely, you're definitely gonna learn how to do taxes. You know, that's a, a given. Um, you're going to learn how to do taxes the ethical, moral, and right way according to the IRS standards. Um, but also you're going to get 13 years of experience, you know, 13 years of, of knowledge. There's a lot of situations that I have been faced with, you know. Um, so you don't have to go at it alone. I feel like that's one of the things that kept me, and I'm glad I worked for a franchise first. And I always tell first time preparers, work with somebody, have a mentor, because you're going to run into things that you don't know how to do, you know? Um, and, and that's okay. Nobody's expecting you to be an expert year one, but that's why I have this. Um, so I can be there. And so you can go through the course and then work with me or sign up to work with me as a tax agent for my firm. Um, first year prepares, all of my prepares have me throughout the season. 
but my first year prepared, I'm just there a little bit more helping them set, set up because everybody works for themselves. They set their own schedule. You know, they take as many or as little clients as they want to. Um, but we have like ongoing trainings. Um, I love branding and marketing. So we have those trainings. I bring in some of my colleagues to train about that. Um, branding yourself personally and um, business wise. But I help them with processes and procedures. Now, as much as I have our process, our software and stuff like that, you still have to have your own way of doing things and how to store information and how to talk to your clients, with, you know, if they have questions, like we go over all of that, you know, those things that you kind of don't get just from taking the course, you know, right. So, so it's like an ongoing mem- uh, mentorship. So does that mean that, um, so after taking your course, I mean, that I can actually go out here and start preparing somebody else's taxes uh, starting next year. So, yes and no. Oh, okay. So, yes, you can. You'll know how to do it, right? Um, and I even teach you after this course what to do with the IRS to get certified. However, if you're going to be doing it for yourself, there's another level of certification or, you know, uh, red tape that you have to get through the IRS. Um, but for the most part, yes, you will know how to do the tax return, but as far as how you're set up, you do have to do some things to get, you know, kind of certified by the IRS. But other than that, yeah, you can go out and, um, learn. I do have it, uh, kind of set up two ways. So you can just purchase the course and go through it yourself, or you can go through like the guided course where, there's um, the group and there's questions. There's like uh, like pop up quizzes, I guess you can say, um, to kind of help you along. So it's 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 two ways you can do it. Awesome. So I'll definitely definitely put a link inside the show notes to make sure that um, all the listeners can actually come through and actually find out a little bit more about you. So um, where did we come out to the the third segment and then the final segment. So the third segment is just kind of the features. Where do you actually see your company uh, within like the next five years? Um, I think it's great that you asked me this because if you asked me this a year ago, I probably wouldn't have a solid answer. But about six or seven months ago, I got a coach who made me answer these questions in very great detail. So in about five years, I see my company being um, one of the top um, tax and accounting firms in in America. And um, I see us having offices or franchises um, throughout the country, including Mexico, Puerto Rico Mm -hmm. uh, and even Canada. I see us having 500 plus employees. I see us having a certification um, where we're partnering with the IRS to do continuing education. Um, I see us going into schools to teach about taxes. Shoot, I might be a a college professor or something. (laughs) There you go. I like it. (laughs) I love love to teach. Um, I really, really love to teach business. And, and taxes. So anywhere where I can talk about those two things, I, I'm there. But that's that's where I, I see myself. And also, let me add, married. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that okay. Is okay. Awesome. Right. <laughs> All right. You hear that, fellas out there? You know, she's single. She out there looks the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to roll down to the final four questions. You ready? Mm-hmm. All righty. So what does wealth mean to you? Wealth means freedom to me. Mm. It means I don't owe anybody. (laughs) And uh, I am leveraging my assets to keep building. That's that's what wealth means to me. All right. And what is your financial book or non-financial book? Um, My favorite financial book is probably Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, That book kind of triggered a lot uh, <laughs> in my 
thought process about about money and about growth and about business. Um, non financial will probably be the big leap by Gay Harrison. Um, yeah, it, it changed how I even view how I view things. You know, hmm. I haven't heard of that one. I might have to check that out. It's and uh, what did you learn from your favorite job? My favorite job uh, will probably be the one I just left. So I was a full-time entrepreneur for five and a half years. When I relocated cities, I took a corporate job because I drained my money in my last studio, didn't have any money to move. So I took a job as a payroll coordinator. I had always wanted to do payroll, but I, I just didn't know where to start. So I learned payroll law, taxes, everything. But the key takeaway that I got from that job is the processes and procedures. I paid attention to how they did everything, how they called the meetings, how they ran the meetings, how they canceled the meetings, how they talked to people. Like I paid attention to everything. And much of how I run my business now is based off of that job. Everybody always skip over the process and procedures, but they work. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, the, um, it's the machine behind everything, you know? Yeah. I always call it the brakes in the business because the brakes say allow you to go fast in your car. And mm-hmm. when you get to slow down a little bit, you just got to follow the process and just take off again. I love it. Yeah. Uh, last question. What is your favorite dish to make? My favorite dish to make, I love potatoes, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, whatever kind of potatoes, but I love to put them with green beans, like mm. together. <laughs> okay. So that's what that, I, I'll eat it as a snack. I'll eat it whenever. <laughs> All right. Well, let's end it safe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Courtney, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, so you. where can people actually find you out on the internet? So my Instagram is tax coach Courtney, C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y. Um, and then my firm page is just M Cortex, M-C-O-R-E-T-A-X. And our website is the same, mcortex.com. I'm new to the TikTok street, so follow me there. It's Tax Coach Courtney as well. It's pretty much everywhere. It's Tax Coach Courtney. You can find me. Um, yeah, find me, follow me, say hey. I'll say hey back. Awesome. All right, everybody, you hear it from her, Courtney Matthews, which is your tax coach to take you to that next level. Even if you just need your taxes prepared, she got you. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Y'all be out. I'm out.